Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing the newest edition of Colouring Heaven magazine. This is the Native American Mythology Special and it includes 50 traditional folklore designs by Jodie Bergsma. So you can see just from the cover here that this is going to be full of animals. So if you're an animal lover, if you love colouring animals, this is going to be perfect for you. But specifically these type of wild Native American emblems. So obviously the wolves, the bears, the eagles, etc. So as with all Colouring Heaven issues, we have the beautiful gold foiling to the title. The front and the back cover is completely colourable, it's all matte, it's not glossy, so you can colour it with markers, pencils, whatever you like. So as we open the book, we have our standard format, we have a little bit about Jodie here, so it tells us that she's American self-taught artist and she has a massive love for maths and geometry and you will see that as we go through the book that her designs really are influenced by lines and geometry and all that kind of good stuff. So we have our colour combination chart for you to track all of your colours and swatch them out before you begin and then we're straight into the first of the 40 illustrations. So I'm just going to flip through them now and you will notice that they are all contained by a border. So sometimes illustrations are, sometimes they're not, it just depends. But all of these do have this lovely sort of rough, ripped kind of looking border on them. So on the left hand side of the book we always have the title of the illustration facing it or a little bit of background and information about the illustration. Here we have the circle of wings, so you know the title for every single piece that we see. Now these were originally paintings, as we know that Jodie is a painter, and they have been transferred into line art to colour. I absolutely love this one, you can see that the forest is all made up of these carved totem poles. We've got in the foreground these beautiful wolves. In the middle ground we've got the totem poles and in the background you can just see that there is some water there and this huge sky. So there's, there's a lot of layers on this particular illustration that would make a really nice look of depth when you colour it. So this is the first of many landscape illustrations. This is called Two Clans, One Spirit. So we have the eagle at the top there, we have the totem image, and then the next one is another one of these landscape orientated pages. This is called In the Company of Orca. Now I absolutely love orca, they're one of my favourite animals and this page is beautiful. As you can see the water is splashing all over, um, all over the top of the orcas. We've got this huge carved wooden boat here with the Native Americans sitting on it. Um, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. I would love to see that original painting actually. So moving back to the portrait orientated pages, we've got Earth Element. Now this is where Jodie's love of that geometry and that maths and that line um, really comes into play with these kind of images. So you can see here we've got lots of triangles, it sort of looks like glass, like shards of glass. And we've got, I'm not sure what this is down here, but it looks like a person that's wearing the head of a stag. So obviously it's all to do with Native American folklore. So if you know more about that, you'll probably understand a lot of the content of these images. This one's beautiful. It's called Dreamcatcher and we have all of the four sort of elemental animals around the Dreamcatcher. This is called Transformed by the Spirit of the Wind. So we have a person here quite close up. We've got some big feathers and we have the eagle as well. This one's called Holy Smoke, another landscape one, and we can see we've got these, I think they're yaks or something very, very similar in the background, and then here we've got this, what I assume is a smoking pipe with the feathers hanging down, I think there's a, a skull here of some sort of animal, it might be the yak. And this one's quite different, this is called Dream Birds, and it's actually formatted as a banner or a stripe across the page rather than filling the whole thing it's sort of like a panorama type um, size so we've got the two Native Americans here we've got all of the eagles starting from the big one and then just going out and we've also got here a heron I think that is or a stork 
We've got an owl and I think a kingfisher. So this is all about the birds. This one's called Masks for the Sun. We've got what looks like, it could be, I don't think it's a tiger. It could be some sort of jaguar, something like that. Um, and another totem um, idol thing there. This one's called Peace at Last. And we have the bird, we have this horse. Um, again, lots of this Native American sort of carving. And here we've got a huge eagle. Now this is the one that I've started to colour, as you can see. It's called Medicine Wheel. And you can probably tell I'm not gonna be doing a fur tutorial anytime soon, because I'm absolutely horrific at drawing fur. Um, but I had a good go. I like this one and I chose it because of the huge piece in the center. Um, this big piece of what I thought looks like glass. And it says medicine wheel. I'm not really sure what a medicine wheel is, but I just saw this as it being completely transparent, very sheer glass. So I coloured it in Prismacolor. I used muted turquoise for the darker blue and sky blue light for the, the inside bits. And I just gradually coloured those out into the white of the page so it looked kind of glassy. And yeah, as for the animals, just I just went a bit mental really. I wasn't really sure. I hate colouring fur, I'm no good at it. But what I did was I laid down firstly on this wolf some burnt ochre and some um, cool greys and that just looked really rough and awful. So I actually got a ballpoint pen and started to flick out more darker lines in those kind of hollowed areas. And it kind of turned out okay. And I did exactly the same on the black bear, um, the eagle, which I don't actually think is too bad to be honest. And then the yak, that was just, let me just zoom in on this. I'll just bring it up to you. I literally just did loads and loads of wavy lines in all kinds of different colors. <laughs> So yeah, not going to be doing um, a tutorial on fur anytime soon, but yes. The only thing about this book that I would say I'm not keen on about the illustrations is that a lot of the elements, a lot of the lines seem to overlap each other in weird places and I'm not really sure where one thing stops and another one begins or if it's supposed to be overlaid. Um, you know, do you know what I mean? I'm, tr I'm trying to find um, a, a good example of what I mean. So here we've got the three watchmen. So again, we've got, this is like the edge of the forest. We've got the wolves sort of monitoring the perimeter and we've got those totem forest again. So this is clearly meant to be smoke coming from a fire. We've got um, the lady with all the feathers and things and then the bird. Here we've got one called transformed from land to sky. This is probably one of those what I'm talking about. So if we just look a little bit closer, let's just zoom in. You can see here on this eagle that on the feathers, we've also got this weird sort of um, rectangle that comes out of nowhere. And then across here, there's a lot of swathing lines that go over everything, over the um, eagles down here. And it's just, I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure how to approach those, if that makes sense. Let's just zoom back out again. So this one's called Wolfgate, and this is a pretty standard one. There's not too many overlapping things here, but there are some in this book that really sort of take a little bit of deciphering as, as to where you're supposed to put the colours and things like that. So this would be a good example. This is Breath of Power. And as you can see, we've got loads again of these sort of waves and lines that go over. Maybe this is supposed to be an underwater thing and this is on the top of the water. I'm not sure, but there, there definitely is a lot of detail in these pages. Um, there's lots and lots of lines and many of the, the blank spaces to color are very, very small on a lot of these images. So you will, like for example, this one, there's loads and loads of detail on here. So you will probably need very, very sharp pencils um, or fine liners to do this. This is called River of Life and this is just, it, <laughs> it blows me away. There's just so much detail on this page. As you can see, we've got the bear trying to catch the salmon out of the river. We have this really up close foreground image of the salmon and then it sort of tapers off backwards into the background where you see this other bear is watching from the top of the waterfall. 
This one's really sweet, it's called Heritage and it is contained inside a spherical border. I really like that. Again, we've got a really good sense of foreground, middle ground and background in these images, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get a really good sense of depth when you've coloured them. This is called Once in a Blue Moose, what a great title. Um, and I'm guessing with the stars in the background that this is supposed to be on a nighttime sky. I really love this one as well, it's called Raven's Wood and as you can see it's sort of taken from the perspective of looking up at these trees so you can see that they sort of taper off into the sky. Again I absolutely adore these totem pole trees and you've got the, uh, the Indians down here, the Native Americans. This one's called Fire and this is all about the wolves and the big cats. There's lots and lots of these swirly lines and I'm sure that when these were originally painted they looked absolutely incredible but it's just turned into line art. Sometimes it's difficult to tell what certain things are. This is called Desert Spirit and this is probably the easiest um, or the less complex of all of the illustrations in the book. This is called Inspired by the Flowers. This has got lots of little birds. I think they're kingfishers or something similar like um, to kingfishers. Lady Hawk features another beautiful Native American with her big cloak and a giant eagle-like bird in the background. This one, again, absolutely wonderful sort of composition. That's the best thing I can say about this book is that the images really are composed brilliantly. So Spirit Journey, this is called. As you can see in the foreground, we have loads of these Native Americans um, on a boat. They're obviously moving or going somewhere. And then in the background, these huge eagles watching over them. Beautiful, beautiful. That, that's gonna be an amazing page when it's colored. Raven Moon Touch the Magic is the title of this one. So again, another uh, dark nighttime background sky, lots of ravens and these totem sort of symbols. I'm not sure what they mean. It must be the symbol of the raven. I'm not sure. Journey to the Dream Time. So this is all about those beautiful big bears. And again, we have what looks like a moon in the background and loads and loads of line art all the way around it that could be trees, they could be part of the sky, I'm not really sure. It definitely is a book that leaves a lot to your own interpretation. Dancing in a Circle of Life, so again we have the elemental creatures um, and the totem symbol in the middle. Against all odds, so here we've got again that smoking pipe which must be something very um, you know, very sort of that like Native Americans must have, losing my words again. Um, and then we have the yak, we have the dream catcher. On the next page we've got gifts from the wolf clan, which goes this way around. So again, the totem trees, the wolves, and then I, I presume that this is the edge of the ocean. This is called Shapeshifter and it's definitely one that you're going to have to have a really good look at before you colour it. So we've got the owl at the top here, the full owl. Then we've got the owl eyes underneath and then we've got the Native American woman and then we've got her sort of wrapped in a big what looks like a wing. So Shapeshifter, I'm guessing this is, you know, when you, the, the Native American... Oh! <laughs> Rosie's just gone mental because the postman came. Um, yeah, so with it being shapeshifter, I'm guessing that this is that Native American belief or, you know, the thing where you turn into animals or you have spirit animals and stuff. This is called Follow the Path of the Bear. Beautiful, beautiful bear in the mountains here with some foliage as well. Number 39 is called Eternal Spirit and this one features some teepees at the bottom. And finally, number 40 is called The Dream Creates the Journey. And we've actually got some beautiful horses here. These are, um, <clears throat> what are those horses called uh, that are native to America only? Are they Mustangs, I think. Mustang horses. Um, absolutely beautiful wild horses just enclosed in this dream catcher. 
So that's all about the subscription service. If you want to subscribe to Colour in Heaven and get the brand new edition on your mat every single month, you can subscribe and you get a discount if you do that as well. So I really hope that you've enjoyed looking through the latest edition of Colouring Heaven. I do love it. It's not the, the type of illustration that I would really pick out to colour myself personally, but I can definitely see um, how lots and lots of people are going to absolutely love this edition. I think Jodie's done a fantastic job and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, where can you get it from? As I say, in every single Colouring Heaven video, you can get it from your local supermarkets and news agents if you live in the UK. It's £5 or £4.99, so a penny off. Um, and you can also buy it online if you can't find it in the store. If you are abroad, if you live anywhere else outside of the UK, you can also buy it online and you can also sign up to that subscription service as well. So thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments below of what you think of this issue. Please also click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.